were these pulled from either the Lolly Time or the Lori for Style at iCloud? I believe these are from the Lolly Time, August 9th, 2019 at 9 38 27 p.m utc minus six the intensity of each encounter in my mind one greater than the last oh my fire emoji fire emoji especially this last one i've never loved you more heart it just keeps growing kiss emoji august 9th 2019 at 9 39 54 p.m and UTC minus six time. I completely agree. We were definitely in new territory in your bedroom. Elena's magic hand has gripped the storm and they stare into each other's eyes, barely able to breathe as intense waves wash over them. And through the investigation, did you learn what storm was a name for? It appeared to be a name for Chad's penis. Were you reading through the James and Elena to determine if it corresponded to real life events? I did. Ms. Heidemann, as part of the exhibit that uh, the state described as the James and Elena story, were you able to determine whether there were chapter breaks in this uh, this story? Uh, in the emails that were sent, it appeared there were chapter one, chapter two. I forgot how many chapters exactly there were, but in some of them, yes, and others, no. In your analysis of Tylee's remains, were you able to identify what you believe to be either blunt or sharp trauma? I identified numerous sharp traumas. Are, are either of those depicted in this photograph here? Yes, five of them are depicted in this photograph. Evaluation of Tylee's bones, did you determine any of these alterations to be consistent with dismemberment? No. And why not? Uh, because they all occur around the pelvic region, which isn't a, a region that you would typically see sharp traumas if um, somebody were trying to dismember the body. And in these particular areas where there is sharp trauma, did you find any indication of thermal damage? Not in the direct area. So there are some portions of the hip bones that have some thermal alteration, but all of the areas with these sharp traumas are unburned. Do you recall uh, working on a case involving Tylee Ryan? Yes, I do. What did they specifically send you that they asked you to evaluate? What was on the inside of the can? Yes, sir. Um, the inside of the can contained some um, decomposing flesh and some um, basically de debris or some other like dirt and sticks and stuff like that. And you, you determined through your analysis that it also had gasoline. That is correct. Detective Consitus, was there anything on this image that drew your attention? Yes, you see that little discoloration, uh, and that is in the immediate area where we um, discovered Tylee. On the days of June 9th and 10th, did you personally aid in removing Tylee Ryan's uh, remains from Chad Daybell's property. Yes. And as you went through that process, did a cause of death become apparent for Tammy Daybell? No. The only thing abnormal we really found on Tammy's examination was that she had a lot of fluid in her lungs, which we call pulmonary edema, um, and she had a foamy fluid in her airways. Her heart was structurally normal. It was the normal size. It did not have dilated chambers. All of her valves were normal. So there was really no great reason why she would be experiencing a cardiac arrhythmia at this time of her life without anything preceding it. Um, after that, you know, we are, we're left with asphyxia. What did you determine to be the manner of death? Manner of death in this case was homicide. And again, we talked about the bruising that you observed. Do you recall where it was on Miss Daybell's body? So Miss Daybell had one bruise on the left side of her chest. Um, she had one bruise on her left arm, and then she had a cluster of bruises on her right arm. In your opinion, could those be consistent with someone being restrained? Yes. And so again, the bruises on Tammy in this case, you determined would have occurred sometime around her time of death. True. If there's a, a sign that the heart isn't working properly, regardless of whether there's signs or not, uh, you're, that's when you're going to get that foam situation, correct? Correct. 
You can have absolutely healthy organs in every single uh, manner, and yet the person can still die, correct? Correct. Are there ways that someone can cause someone else's death in that manner without leaving any signs or external injuries? Absolutely. This would include things like smothering, smothering with a pillow, putting a bag over the head, putting a weight on the chest so that the chest can't rise. These are all potential things that would not necessarily leave any sign. Could it also indicate someone kneeling on a chest and holding someone down? Yes. By approximately uh, April of 2020, we had narrowed down that uh, they had both been missing and went missing in September of 2019. Uh, Tylee appears to have gone missing first sometime around the 8th or the 9th of September was our, our best information. And that JJ had gone missing approximately two weeks later around September 22nd or, or September 23rd. Do you know what was ultimately found near those data points? So at a nearby location to the fire pit, Investigators in this, approximately in this area, were able to recover uh, human remains that had been buried. Do you know who those human remains were ultimately determined to be? Yes, they were Tylee Ryan. We had also looked at dates associated with uh, JJ Vallow. We knew he was in school after September 9th. Uh, we also had other information that he had been observed uh, up until at least September. 22nd. Was a search conducted around that area? These data points here by the pond uh, really just uh, uh, almost next to or under that tree was, uh, was a grave for J.J. Vallow. Detective, do you recall approximately when Lori Vallow was arrested? February 20th of 2020. As part of your investigation into searching for J.J. Vallow and Tylee Ryan, did you listen to jail phone calls between Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell? I did. How often would they speak with each other? Maybe 10 or 12 times a day. And Your Honor, if I may publish by HDMI. So I texted Ray. He responded pretty quick. Did you hear Mr. Daybell say that he texted Brett. Yes, I did. Through your investigation, did you become aware of any individual an individual that had a, a nickname or alias of Ray? Through our investigation, we learned that Alex Cox often went by Ray Lamar. What was the date of this phone call again? June 8th of 2020. And was Alex Cox alive or dead at this time? No, he was deceased. Do you recall when he died? December 12th of 2019. Detective, through your investigation, um, did you find uh, any information that Chad Daybell claimed to have the ability to speak with people who were deceased? Through our investigation, uh, interviews with multiple witnesses that were close to him, um, through the teachings in his books, uh, he would often talk about how he had the ability to see and speak with people on the other side of the veil. I asked him what we talked about. He's very optimistic. <laughs> it was very optimistic for you, or he's very optimistic it could happen. <laughs> he's very optimistic. <laughs> I've thought back on that entire scenario. <laughs> we went over the plan and the blueprint. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he said that wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> right. Can you tell us a little bit about what we are seeing on this slide? So this is a timeline that I created uh, when we came in, when I came into this particular uh, case in an effort to better understand the timeline and all of the information. I, uh, I put it into a timeline chronologically to better understand what I needed to do. So on June 29th, um, Charles actually sent Tammy an email regarding her ongoing relationship with their spouses and actually requested contact from Charles. 
Tammy, my name is Charles Vallow. I have some vital and disturbing information regarding your husband and my wife, Lori. I apologize to be the one sending this, but something has to be done. Um, Charles also sent Chad an email and confronted him regarding the relationship as well. Do you know when Charles Vallow was killed? So he was killed um, less than two weeks after this email. Yeah, so as we move, again, kind of moving down this timeline, at July 18th, 2019, a text message from Lori to Chad, um, where she states, quote, so I talked to the insurance company. He changed it in March. So it was probably Ned before we got rid of him. They can't tell me to who, of course, but it's done. I'll still get 4,000 a month from SS, believe me, social security, end of quote. And were you able to determine who Ned was in reference to through the investigation? Yeah, that next uh, paragraph there, Ned is a name that Chad and Lori assigned using it in reference to Charles Vallow. What about this, this series of messages stood out to you? The first is line 2667. Um, this is a text that is initiated by Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow, indicating that he has been instructed to focus his efforts on Tylee Ryan. The second thing uh, is present in the following two lines, 2665 and 2660. Lori Vallow makes a reference to Chad Daybell or a request to find out her, meaning Tylee Ryan's percentage, as well as JJ's percentage. That word uh, is referring to the death percentage for Tylee Ryan and JJ. And when we look at that line 2660, there is reference to specific percentages, it appears. Yes. Could you talk about that a little bit? Again, this is a message from Chad Daybell to Lori Vallow, where, wherein he is indicating his death percentages for Tylee at 0.13 and for JJ at 99.99 which follows with a reference uh, that Raphael or Chad Daybell had visited JJ and told JJ to follow Amy into the light, which is a common reference for death. In this particular message, there's also a reference to turning up the pain to 10. Who said that again? Chad Daybell. And also a reference to placing a spiritual virus in her. Who said that? Chad Daybell. And when you look at that line 2603, there's a reference to extreme changes. Did that catch your attention? It did. What did you, through your investigation and experience, what did you believe that to be in reference to? Well, within three months of this date, Tylee, JJ, and Tammy are all dead. And Agent Hart, is this again a continuation of the previous two slides? It is. Who are these messages being exchanged between? Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell. What about these particular messages stood out to you in relation to the investigation? This particular conversation is some of the most critical evidence that I located. It represents the clearest and most specific reference to a plan regarding Tylee and JJ. When you indicate that there's the reference to the plan. Who is asking if there's a plan? Lori Vallow is asking Chad Daybell if there is a, quote, perfectly orchestrated plan to take the children. What is Chad's response? Chad's response is that there is a plan being orchestrated for the children. Where were Tylee and JJ's remains ultimately located? On Chad Daybell's property. 